Good morning. Thanks, uh, Julian, for that. Thanks for the invite. Um, if you're wondering about the beard, by the way, um, I, I had I'd grown a beard some months ago. Um, one of my daughters said to me when I shaved it off, well, why did you shave it off? Um, and I said, oh, did you like it? Do you, do you want me to grow it again? And, and she said, yes, um, because otherwise there's just too much face. <laughs> so here I am trying not to offend people with my face. Um, I haven't timed this, by the way, so this could go badly wrong. Um, but uh, thankfully, we've got a timer. So I'll just, I'll just uh, jump straight into it. Uh, we are living in an age uh, where if you can't say something in 140 characters in a tweet, it's not worth saying. It's almost like the end of thoughtfulness, which, you know, I decry because sometimes things need to be well thought through. They need to take a bit more time. They need to be sa said over a few pages and not just in one soundbite. And less is sometimes poorer and we need to be more reflective. And less also brings harshness and rigidity of its own, with its own price of insensitivity. And we see it on social media. You know, there was a, a very well-known film uh, a couple of years ago called The Social Network. Sometimes I go on Facebook in Gibraltar and I think it should be called the anti-social network. Technology, undoubtedly, has changed our lives and how we interact and do business. And, but how different it w all was from uh, the 1970s and 80s uh, and how I grew up. It's important to, I suppose, reflect and, and not forget you know, that quote from Thomas Hardy that Time changes everything except some th something within us which is always surprised by change. I was brought up in a very different Gibraltar, or at least a Gibraltar that was different in some respects. What I intend to do today, this morning, in the brief time that I've got, is to cover the context of the changing Gibraltar and then dive into three examples. Firstly, of how society changed. Secondly, of how uh, it's, there has been something that was slow to change, but has been changing. And thirdly, I'll give an example of something that, in my view, has not changed at all. I'm then going to argue that positivity can bring change or should be applied to that changing context. But first, let me take a snapshot back into history. And that nostalgia of the Gibraltar of the 1970s and 80s, where I grew up, it wasn't all good, but it wasn't all bad. And, you know, those of us who were around at the time, and, uh, you know, there's a mixed audience today, but you'll remember the 70s and 80s in Gibraltar, the closed frontier, the scarcity of land, the, the housing crisis, how the MOD had most of the land in Gibraltar. You know, I remember as a teenager, uh, the Commonwealth Park was, as you know, the, it was a hockey pitch, the NOP, there was a, it was guarded by, uh, it was locked up by the MOD. We used to jump the wall uh, as teenagers, go and play football. From time to time, the, the, the Navy on duty would realize that these uh, pesky teenagers are again playing football, so he'd come with his Alsatian and, and uh, throw it, at the, you know, put the dog onto us, and then we'd jump the wall and, and, and escape again. And uh, that was the kind of Gibraltar I, I grew up in. Europa Point, you know, Rosier Swimming Club that we couldn't go to, Nuffield Pool, again, we couldn't go to. Um, it was a very different Gibraltar. There was water at Montague Pavilion instead of housing. Uh, there was water at Shepherds Marina instead of Ocean Village. And there was, as you all know, instead of Safeways or Morrisons, um, there was a road uh, beyond Chilton Court with a barrier that, again, we couldn't get through. And there were Moroccan workers at casements, as you know. Um, above all, there, was, there were no mobile phones, internet, calculators, and indeed, I remember using the abacus <laughs> at, uh, at, uh, at school. There was, in, in some respects, almost uh, voluntary, but also imposed segregation. The MOD and their families, Moroccan workers, imposed segregation and different uh, examples of civilians and members of 
religious communities. And of course, that's the product of history, and we talk about tolerance. I always, always think that tolerance is a bad word. Actually, we should celebrate cultural diversity in Gibraltar, but we also need to recognize that this is an area where there hasn't been sufficient change as, as quickly as there should be, because in some respects, I was brought up in a place where, yes, it was tolerant, but uh, there was voluntary segregation in different districts, and the Moroccan workers was, also, was always a very good example. There were four factors, in my view, that made things change. The physical barriers fell in 1982 and 1985. The frontier opened for pedestrians and then for cars. Education, how youngsters went to the UK in larger numbers. There was an economic shift that made Gibraltar much more cosmopolitan, from the MOD to the private sector. And there was a mix of nationalities that came in in the private sector. And you see that, for example, in the gaming industry. All that and new technologies brought new pressures, though, challenges and opportunities. But it did, of course, uh, bring that change. So I'm going to jump into those examples that I said. The first example, how society has changed very radically. In the area of social media and young people, um, I've got daughters. Have you ever tried to get teenage daughters to call each other on a landline? Well, they don't do that anymore. You know, I've, sometimes I'll say to one of my daughters as well, you know, are, are we going to do something? Well, I'm not sure. I'm waiting for one of my friends to say whether they are going to uh, answer. And I said, well, have, have, you, uh, have you spoken to them? Oh, yes, I've sent them a message, but it's, it's delivered but not read. Um, well, why don't you give them a call? Oh, no, Dad, we don't do that. Um, so you, you get that. The gadgetry and evolution is almost like the new artificial limb. They can't do without it, but the resulting pressures on young people, the anxiety, sometimes the depression, sometimes the bullying that goes on social media. I believe that there needs to be global regulation and better enforcement of social media and content. It must come because these are not things that we were brought up with. And we as a society need to grapple and deal with it. In Little Gibraltar, there's not much we can do because we don't control these, these big social media platforms. But as a, as a world society, there must be more to be done to control social media content. And last week, there was a very um, touching story of, of, a, of a teenage suicide and, and a father going on, on uh, on the media to explain how Instagram posts had then been found on her, on her feed and how that could have uh, also led her to, to take a particular course that was so tragic in that family. So we need to do much more in the area of social media for young people to give them support and indeed to regulate content. I'll give you an example of something that has been slow to change in my opinion, the issue, issues of discrimination and intolerance. The viewpoint program on housing the other day was so powerful uh, and showing that we've really not got to grips with that area in many ways. Sexism. I think Gibraltar is still a chauvinistic <laughs> society in some respects and I think we need to deal with that and, and give real equality uh, and, and jump into the 21st century in a serious way. Our attitudes to mental health have been improving but there's still stigma and we need to deal with all, all that. And I believe positivity and education can break down those barriers. Let's not forget that, as Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. He also added that no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can learn to love, and that we should apply most particularly to our long-term residents in the Moroccan community or our British Gibraltarians of Moroccan origin. There's something that did not change at all, though, and that is, in my opinion, our interface with Spain. Whether it was Franco Spain or democratic Spain, we still see the same interface with Spain, the antagonism and acrimony with Spain. And that I regret, because there is a need for positivity, to achieve what we call convivencia, that cohabitation where we finally recognize and respect that we are cohabiting in this piece of Latin Mediterranean Southern Europe without claiming each uh, uh, land, respecting our human rights and allowing and recognizing that this small territory does not represent a threat to modern Spain and that we enjoy going to modern Spain, but that does not make us want to be Spanish. 
Positivity is a powerful weapon, but there is always a tension with negativity. There's always a choice between negativity and positivity. And sometimes we fall into the trap of that negative discourse. We certainly do in the political world, and I'm the first to admit it, as a reaction sometimes. Try it. We need to try as much as possible to present a contest of ideas and hope because we need to have that bravery and audacity of thinking that things can actually change. Julian mentioned that I started in politics a long time ago, and indeed, and I took a break, um, and I came back to politics because in many ways, I remain an idealist and I believe in our future. You know, I, I guess I could have stayed in the comfort of my living room. It was certainly more sheltered. There was no name calling. Well, actually, only sometimes. <laughs> but changing things is not easy. But for me, getting involved was the only way to try to effect change. After all, it was Gandhi who said, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Audacity. Audacity is a, world, is a word I like. The audacity of thinking that something can change. The sheer goal of believing, the view that things don't need to stay the same, that the norm is not permanent, that what has been done for decades wrongly is not our way of life, but is a shackle to be abandoned. The audacity of thinking that we can do better, the audacity of believing and hoping for a better day. I have not stopped believing in the idea that things can change and that we have a bright future. There is far too much negativity and far too little positivity, far too much despair and too little hope, far too much introspection and far too little vision, far too much caution and far too little radicalizing change. I believe in the politics of hope, of giving our people hope that things will change, that we are up to the challenge, that we can create opportunities for everyone, from the small business owner in Main Street to the MOD worker, from the young person who left school at 16 to the returning university student. The standpoint of positivity, in my opinion, is crucial, that we have a clear and positive vision for the future, that we represent new and exciting ideas, that our vision is sustainable, that we are not just telling people what they want to hear, but what is in the long-term interests of our community. It is positivity and not negativity that will win the hearts and minds. And that is the task we have. I read a book last year called The Path. It's a revealing book, it's, I recommend it. Um, it's a book that talks about the ripples of change, how little things can change things. When you smile to people, they'll, it ripples across society. Where little gestures ripple across society from small human interactions to big gestures. Positivity needs to be the focus, whether it is a personal target or societal change as a society. Be the change that you seek. Set positive parameters and take that idealism and, and objectives forward in sport, culture, and in any field. Break down barriers, discrimination, to actually make those changes. Because in this changing society, we all need to embrace the reality of the ever-changing environment and dynamic and try to bring about the benefits in that change through a positive approach, however tempting negativity sometimes is. Thank you very much.